Good afternoon, people watching in 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm going to give you a scripture. It's in Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing but in all things, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known. I've given that verse before, but I'm going to give it again. I just got back from an appointment at the mall. Oh, my. I, you know what? Good Friday. I'm not good for Black Friday. Bad Friday. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I'm back. I'm safe. I'm you know what? But I can definitely definitely see why you have to be vigilant. If you're going shopping, I hope you've already gone. <sighs> I hope you don't have to go out. Be careful. Let me give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins. Past, present, and future was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. Not of ourselves. Not of works. Least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever... You and I or whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ and his shed blood, the moment you accept him as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. Rapture ready, which is going to happen at any time and sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, teach you. The Holy Spirit will change you. This just came out off of war news this morning. U.S. is concerned about a possible transfer of ballistic missiles from Iran to Russia. The United States has expressed serious concerns about the possible transfer of short-term or short-range ballistic missiles from Iran to the Russian Federation. The statement was made with the coordinator of strategic communications of the White House National Security Council, John Kirby. According to him, the use of such missiles in Ukraine could lead to negative consequences. He pointed out that Iran is already reportedly supplying Russia with various types of weapons, including drones, data drones, guided bombs, and artillery munitions. Thus, it is possible that Iran will take the next step in supporting Moscow. Now, listen, if, if Iran is supporting Russia, how is Iran supporting Russia? So that means that Iran has more than what we know. How are they getting that? I'll give you one wild guess. It rhymes with the U.S. It rhymes with the U.S. The representative of the American administration also noted that the recent trip of Russian Defense uh, Minister Shugo to Iran, which he inspected new types of ballistic missiles caused a lot of suspicion on the part of the U.S. I don't know why. They're playing a game. And they're playing a game with, Amer with the people. The American people. They want you to think. They want us to think. First of all, they think you're stupid. And they want you to keep thinking that, oh yeah, you know, Iran is doing all of this. And, we, you know, we have to support them because of, because of what? Really? Six billion dollar assets unfrozen? Why? Just so they can help Russia? Think about it.
Think about it. U.S. authorities suspect that Russia, in exchange for military support, offers Iran cooperation in the field of missile defense, air defense systems, and military electronics. However, there is currently no evidence of this. Of course, there's no evidence of it because they're too stupid to figure it out in the first place. Iran, look, listen very carefully to this. Iran is more advanced than you think. Iran is more advanced than you think, and the Holy Spirit is more advanced than all. Because that's the only reason why Iran has not bombed Israel. The church is still here. And even so, Iran is not going to... Yeah, right. They're going to try. They're going to try. But God will fix that. God will fix that. Now this came out also. And got this on war news. It said just hours before the start of the agreed truce agreed between Israel and Hamas, the spokesman for the Al Qassam brigades, the military arm of the Palestinian Islamic group that has ruled that Gaza that has ruled the Gaza Strip since 20, uh, 2007. Listen to this. They just called for an escalation of the conflict in Israel. In a video message broadcast by the Al Jazari television network, I think his name is Abade, Abu Abade, greets brothers in Yemen, Lebanon, Iraq, and elsewhere and calls for an escalation of the conflict with the Israeli occupation forces on all fronts. So much for your uh, truths. Yeah, right. I knew this was a joke. Israel shouldn't have never agreed to this in the first place. So um, earlier today, Qatar's foreign ministry spokesman announced that the ceasefire agreed by Israel and Hamas will begin at 7, 7 a.m. Friday morning, which is long past with the first 13 hostages to be released by 4 p.m. He then added that Qatar has the list of names of the Israeli hostages that will be released on the first day. For the for a while for the hostages from other countries, he emphasized that the priority is of course women and children. The ultimate goal is the cessation of hostilities with a lasting truce, according to the Wall Street Journal. Egypt says it too has a list of the first 10 Israeli hostages to be released. Now they're calling for hostilities. Now they're calling for an escalation. And again, this just came out this morning. This thing was the biggest mistake that Israel could have made. Big time. And it says earlier today, Qatar's foreign ministry spokesman announced that the ceasefire agreed by Israel and Hamas will begin at 7 a.m., which is already way past that now. Now, whether they were, I'm hearing they were, some of them were probably released. I don't know. I don't know for sure. But right now they're calling for a ceasefire. And they're not only calling, they're not a ceasefire, a escalation. They're not only calling for an escalation. They're calling for brothers in Yemen, Lebanon, Iraq, and elsewhere, and calls for an escalation of the conflict. I'm going to link all this in the description box.
I'm going to link both of these articles in the description box. Like I said last night, there's more going on than what we already know. And if we knew what was really going on, let me put it like this. I don't think you really want to know what's really going on right now. I'm going to link this in the description box and I will be back later. Thank you.